in here. Yes, it's this one. Okay, can can you see everything okay? Okay. So thank you, Edward, again for hosting and doing all the preparations for, for the event. So I'm Rafael. Uh, uh, I'm supervised by Dr. Lucas and I'm co-supervised by Dr. Giles. So in here, I will be talking about uh, some findings in how to apply the interval analysis in bond model checking. It, this started last year during the software verification competition where I noticed that uh, the current implementation that SPMC had was broken for some cases. And then I started studying how to improve it. And well, let's get started. So what do I talk about? Initially, I do an overview about uh, interval analysis and why it's useful to have one. Then I will talk about how it is in SPMC today. Then I will propose some extensions uh, for how to improve the current implementation that we have. Then I'll talk about some experiments that I have done and then some final remarks. So an overview about interval analysis. So the idea is to compute the, all the intervals that every variable can assume in each problem statement. And the analysis can be used to infer properties uh, regarding the problem states and flow. So in this program, I have uh, uh, variables. Uh, so at line three, I have a, an integer a, which is non-deterministic, and I have a loop. And while this in this loop, while a is less or equal than 100, I increase a. And finally, I have an assert that a is greater than 10. I can, oh, I can compute uh, this interval for, for a throughout the program. So at line four, for instance, at here, I do not have any restrictions over A. So I'm assuming that it can assume any value, that can have any value from minus infinity until plus infinity. But at line six, I know that I, are, I am inside the loop. So I know that this loop condition must hold. So I know now that A needs to come from minus infinity until 100. And on line seven, since it's after the loop, I know that the loop condition does not hold anymore. So it means that A is, a, is greater than 100. Okay. And also it's important to mention a bit about soundness and completeness. And soundness is the program, anal it is the program analyzed analysis is sound with respect to the property P. Whenever for a program P, analysis P will be true implies that P satisfies property P. What this means in other words, it means that uh, in the concept, context of interval analysis means that if a variable A, uh, a can assume a value like two, my analysis needs to tell that it can assume that value. It, it doesn't matter if I say that it can assume also, that uh, it can also has, have a tree as a value, as long as I say that it's true. So that's sound in this context. Completeness means the, the, the complement. It means that if I tell that to have a vulnerability, my program, uh, the variable A is true, then it needs to be able to have this true as a concrete value. And here we assume that uh, our analysis is going to be sound by always over approximating the intervals. So if uh, a, variable, a variable could have true as a value, the interval that I say that this variable is in needs to have the two. And I will rely on the remaining of the bounded model checking process to ensure that I'm giving a correct value for it. So, because my interval can have other values than two, but uh, the remaining of the engine is responsible to throw off these values that don't make sense. Oh, it's So, some applications of the interval analysis. Uh, it helps us to decrease the number of states that we need to verify uh, in the problem. In memory safety, it helps uh, to remove unreachable references, unreachable malloc, unreachable freeze. 
uh, for reachability, we can remove unreachable states, uh, or we can remove assertions that we will know that will always hold. And for concurrency, we can remove interleavings that we do not need to be verified because there might be some contradiction in the path condition. Uh, so in bottom model checking, we can remove unneeded verification states. So in here, we can see that uh, if A is less than zero and A is greater than zero, which is a contradiction. And which means that this assert zero is unreachable. There is not, no value in this problem that will make us arrive at that assert. So we do not really need to verify this problem. And for key induction algorithm, it, uh, the key induction algorithm consists in hijacking the loop condition. So every variable in the loop becomes non-deterministic and uh, computing the intervals then become essential to help to solve this problem at all. So in this case, we add uh, at line seven, we see that A becomes non-deterministic, B, B becomes non-deterministic and we add assumes as the intervals. Uh, or the values over A, so that we can prove this program safe. Uh, okay, and somewhere in this section, uh, interval analysis is a technique to obtain the values for all variables in each program statement. Uh, for it to be sound, the concrete intervals must be inside the abstraction. Uh, the technique can be used to remove assertions that will definitely hold in a program. And computer intervals is a requirement for applying the key induction proof. Okay. Uh, right. Now I've started talking a bit, a bit about how this technique works in SPMC. Uh, so that SPMC architecture consists in initially uh, having multiple front ends. Uh, these front ends for C++, for Java, for Solidity, for Cherry. And we generate a control, uh, control flow graph using for, for, those, for those languages and end up generating a go-to program, which is what we use for our analysis. And having once we have the go-to program, we link it with external libraries and we apply abstract interpretation techniques. One of them is this interval analysis. And after we do all of this preprocessing, we give this program to a symbolic execution engine where we inject our memory model, we inject some new proc safety properties, resulting at the end in an SMT formula for the current bound, which we will send to the solver that will check whether the property holds or do not. So the idea is that if we optimize the preprocessing of the go-to program, then we can make a fast, the symbolic execution faster and make the formula itself easier for the solver. So the formal definition of how we handle intervals. So in SPMC, an interval for a variable consists in a lower bound, if there is no lower bound, then it's minus infinity. There is an upper bound. And if it's not an upper bound, then it's infinity. And the only rule is that the lower bound needs to be always less or equal than the upper bound. If that does not happen, then there's a clear contradiction, which means that there's no value that can, that can solve this path condition. So this statement is unreachable. Uh, okay, so how we compute intervals. So first we apply uh, restrictions. Uh, they are computed through intersections. So in this case, A is less than 50 uh, becomes, so A here does not have any restrictions. So it's minus infinity and to infinity. Then we do intersection with what is less than 50, which is minus infinity until 50, which results in minus infinity to 50. Then the else statement is the reverse, basically. So it's from 50 to infinity. Then we, we have 50 to infinity as a result for A. So, and the merging is done through the whole operation 
uh, also worth noticing that here at line six, A becomes three, and at line 10, A becomes five. So we merge the, these intervals when A can be three and A can become five by a whole. So it's the minimum or it's the maximum. So we are, so we are, the over approximation is happening here because four cannot, is not a, val, a possible value, but three and five might be, and they are in this interval. Okay. So in short, for known, uh, for known sequences, we initialize a variable to minus infinity to infinity. We use the conditional to restrict the interval, and then we merge the intervals after conditional. So at line four, we have uh, A as being minus infinity to infinity. At line five, we have from minus infinity to 50. At line six, seven, we have three to three. At line nine, 50 to infinity. And at line 11, five to five. And then at line 12, we merge the output of both branches. Uh, okay, so in this program, we inject the assumes, the computer assume at each branch. So at line five, we inject uh, an assume, line 10, another, and at, outside the loop, we also inject what are the values that expect. Okay, so there are some interesting limitations. First of all, that uh, intersection of abstract states can result in another approximation. So this example, it will work fine. So how can we compute this? We know that A is greater than 10 and that A is less than 30. We can just go in a plain intersection. Uh, so from 10 to infinity, intersection to minus infinity to 30, which results in 10 to 30, which are the values inside uh, this if. However, when we start comparing two uh, variables, then it becomes, uh, it might lead to some confusion because both are over approximations. So we might have, or we might remove the states that uh, we shouldn't. So in this case, it's fine. So if we wait from three to 11 and B to two to nine, we compute that A can only be two to nine. But if A was one to, to 11, then uh, if you compute it, just use intersection, we are going to lose one value of A, which is one. So we are losing information. We are doing an under approximation, which might lead to false uh, proofs. So we are, yes, we might say that this problem is correct when it's not. And there's too many of our approximations that's not in our method. So for instance, we completely ignore any operation, uh, any arithmetic operation. So A equals zero and A plus one is less or equal to one. What we do is we over approximate A plus one to infinity because we don't know what it is. Then it results on five not having any restrictions. Okay. So as a summary for the section, then uh, yes, when you see tracks integer intervals in a Cartesian domain, so we lose the, we are doing another approximation and losing uh, the previous relation that existed. Uh, at each branch, we are injecting intervals as assumes, and it is very precise. Uh, it's, it's so imprecise that it has no problem arri arriving at a fixed point. And this is important because when you have a while loop, we are recomputing the, the intervals until we find a, a point where we do not change. And since we are over approximating, we always go to infinity, so it, it finds a fixed point very quickly. Uh, so some extensions that, uh, these are some classical interval analysis extensions, and I'm applying them in the MC to see how they help. So for back to that example of uh, A and less than B, we can apply a contractor algorithm. So if you try to contract A in terms of B, we compute two uh, contractors. So first is the forward contractor where we compute uh, a Y with uh, I minus B. And then after computing this forward, we compute a backwards and then we approximate and repeat it until we find a fixed point. So if you use a uh, contractor algorithm to try to solve what are the values of A, 
we find that A is from one to nine, which is a better approximation in this, in this case. And it, it also contains the, the one, so we're not losing, we're not under approximating anymore. Uh, another extension is support interval arithmetic. So we can apply plus, minus, times, multiplication, division over intervals. And if we add support to them, we get more precise intervals for our variables for all the program. And which might lead to one problem with loops and which can be solved by modular arithmetic. So at each assignment, we can also restrict the values that uh, any variable can assume. So if I have an integer, I know that it's limited for a 32 bits in a 32 bit architecture, of course. But uh, then instead of going to infinity, I can just assume that it goes from the minimum possible value until the maximum possible value which can help uh, programs like uh, this, where I have a condition that's clearly not possible. Uh, if I have interval arithmetic, this program will take too long to be, it will take, uh, it will never convert because it would always have A plus one because there is not going to have a limitation over its upper bound. Uh, okay. So there is also a technique called the loop widening. Uh, this technique tries to accelerate the convergence by trying to extrapolate the, uh, the values. Right. So in this case, for this problem, if we try to compute what is the resulting interval at each A plus plus, it's basically what we had before plus uh, one, one, an intersection with the loop condition. So to show, if you try to, to compute this problem, we would start with zero, zero. Then in the next iteration, we would go from zero, one. Then it would, it would take 1,001 interactions until it reaches zero to 1,001. And then until you find a fixed point. And then at the exit of the loop, we would just do intersection to arrive at 1,001 to 1,001. So it would take a lot of time just to arrive at a fixed point. We can accelerate that by just uh, extrapolating it. So the idea is, if in the previous state, uh, my interval was growing, then I just say that it's infinity. Or if it is decreasing, I just say that it equals to minus infinity. And if I apply this, it arrives at a fixed point very quickly. So in this program, it only took three interactions to find a fixed point with zero to infinity on line four and a thousand one to infinity on line five. But we lost too much precision right now because before we had zero to a thousand one and we had a thousand one to a thousand one. So what we can do is apply a narrowing technique so the narrowing consists in, if in my previous interaction, I had minus infinity, and now I have a lower bound, then I just, and the same for the upper bound. If I had infinity, and now I have an upper bound, I restrict it to this upper bound. So for the same program, once I have the extrapolation fixed point, I can just apply again the same uh, algorithm. And now I can have the zero to 1001 back. And here, if I do the intersection with the, the new fixed point, I have 1001 to 1001 back. So it accelerates the convergence of this program. Okay. And okay, so a summary subsection uh, is BBC interval analysis, uh, lots precision, and does not apply some class optimizations. And we can get more precise intervals by adding these extensions. Okay. So I had done some preliminary experiments to, to see uh, how these extensions are working. So my first goals were to test the current implementation, see if it is working, if it is adding something wrong. And also try to verify whether the extra preprocessing time is actually worth. 
So to test that, I did the evaluation on the rich safety category of uh, SVCOMP23 using a tool called BGZ. And three configurations were used. Uh, the first one was only contractors with 150 seconds and six gigabytes of RAM. And the second and the third ones were both with contractors and modular uh, interval arithmetic, but one had extrapolation and narrowing and the other didn't. And these both were with 30 seconds only. So for contractors only, uh, I executed this experiment last year in November. And as we can see, it increased a lot of uh, numbers of uh, verification tasks that SBMC was able to solve. It also helped with the incorrect results of SBMC. And these incorrect results are actually different than what the baseline had. So my justification so far is that uh, because now we are able to solve more tasks than some of them SBMC also verified incorrectly. So overall, the contractor was better. However, for interval arithmetic and widening, it was not as helpful as I expected. Uh, as we can see, we have a reduction of a lot of benchmarks, like 500 and more. We had some unique uh, benchmarks that uh, we weren't able, able to solve, but now we are. Those benchmarks are from uh, ICA and hardware category. This category contains lots of uh, event-driven applications or hardware-like, hardware, -like, hardware uh, circuits converted into C. So it's a lot of variables with uh, so an, uh, an undeterministic variable. And then you have uh, this variable plus one, this variable plus the other, this variable and this other, then there is an error. So it's, Many simple uh, arithmetic and lots of uh, conditionals. And it helped in those categories. However, when we consider widening, it took too long to find a fixed point because of the, uh, the extrapolation and narrowing, it took too long. And one of my justifications so far is that because we also apply one thing called unwind. And in this unwind, we try to unstatic, statically unroll the, the program as much as we can. So if uh, I, we know that a loop has a thousand interactions, like the for, for I to zero until a thousand, instead of having this loop, we convert this loop, uh, we just unroll this, this loop. So we do, do a thousand copies of this loop. So that takes a while to find a fixed point if we're doing extrapolation and narrowing all the time. So, so far, uh, the contractor is a, seems a sound way to contract abstract intervals. Uh, the extrapolation and narrowing might take too long to reach a fixed point, and this can be even worse when you're combining with the static loop and rolling. Uh, the interval arithmetic might give better results in ICA and hardware uh, if we add the support for more operations, because most of those benchmarks relied on bitwise operations that we do not support now. So we will just extrapolate. And currently the, the experiments are too short in time for us to, to get a good conclusion about uh, BMC, which leads me to summary. So the preliminary experiments were planned to test out the soundness of the implementation so far. Show that the contraction algorithm can be used to merge the symbolic states. Uh, the extension seems to be sound as they didn't add incorrect results. Uh, the precision improvement didn't help with the scores. So, but for 30 seconds. And my next experiments, we went to verify for longer runs with 90 seconds, 150, 300. And uh, I will try out different configurations, like the, uh, the go to unwind disabled and enabled, which combinations should do, like combine the, instead of uh, removing interval arithmetic, keeping only modular, all these kinds of combinations and deployment more arithmetic operators, specifically the bitwise ones. 
So the, the next step, so where I want to go with this. So one step would be uh, applying some heuristics for the interval analysis, because the experiments have shown that uh, decrease the scores, but we were able to verify some unique benchmarks. So we could try to find some heuristic that uh, decides whether this, which, which extensions should we use for this problem. And we could also even consider other, other things like, uh, are we trying to apply an induction proof? Uh, what is the current bound? Is, is this problem even limited? Because if you are just, uh, if you are just able to verify up to a, a bound 50, there's no reason for us to actually try to compute the intervals beyond that. Uh, add support for concurrency, because as I mentioned, concurrence is a bit harder. And if you, if you can cut states, it's always good because concurrence is exponential. And right now we don't track uh, the, the global variables in the context of concurrency. So if you start doing that, we might be able to start doing key induction for concurrency and try to remove some more interlinear that are completely impossible. And what a person you want to do, which is combination, com combining the interval analysis with our points to analysis. So a points to analysis consists in tracking down where all the pointers of the program can be pointing to at each state. So for instance, in this program, I have a variable PTR line four that can only deterministically point to either A or B. So a points to analysis would tell me, okay, PTR points to A and B. But this if looks at the contents of PTR. So P contents of PTR is less than four. And the only one that has this is A. So we could optimize our value set analysis just to tell, okay, inside this branch, PTR definitely points to A. And this can help us with, um, so when we transform this into a semantic formula, Yes, we see has to do an implication rule for every place that uh, we could be pointing to. So if we try to do the reference inside this uh, inside line six, we would generate a, a implication such as if a if PTR points to a, then this must uh, if, then this must hold. If PTR points to b, then this must hold. And then we optimize by removing lots of uh, unneeded verification conditions. And the other thing is at line 12, we have the constants of PTR equal 10. So this is actually a problem right now in the interval analysis because we currently don't track uh, the references. So in this case, A might be updated and B might be updated, but we discard this information. And well, as conclusions, um, I have presented my ongoing research about the applying interval analysis over BMC. Uh, the interval, the preliminary results show that the contraction algorithms, contraction algorithms can improve the analysis time, and that the extra processing time for the extensions but might not help the SMT solvers as much. And thanks for watching. Have any questions?